Something in here looks different. This is a pretty cool new view here. That's right. We have a new office and Richmond County's nightly news starts right now. Operations for the Richmond Observer, Live at 5, and Good Morning Sandhills on The Classic Rock have moved into our new home at 115 South Lawrence Street in downtown Rockingham. The TV and radio stations were set up over the weekend with a quick test of the GMS equipment Saturday night. The first broadcast of the show was this morning. Kenny Melvin, co-owner of parent company KCL Media, bought the former bank building from the city of Rockingham earlier this year. All media operations will be conducted upstairs, while the downstairs office will be parceled out for rent to small business owners. Heading into Friday night's quarterfinal game of the NCHSAA 4 AA state playoffs, the Raider varsity football team knew the stakes were the highest for the program at any point in the last decade, and unfortunately the Raiders fell just short of the task at hand. Richmond welcomed in the Myers Park Mustangs in front of a packed Raider stadium, but it would be the Myers Park players and coaches who rode off into the night with a victory as the visiting team ended the Raiders' season with a 37-14 win. Entering the game, the Raiders were riding a 10-game winning streak and saw it snapped by Myers Park. We knew we were going to have to make some one-on-one -on -one plays. We knew there was going to be some plays they had to make and if they, if they were going to play it or, uh, or we were going to make the plays. You know, and uh, they made the plays tonight, so hats off to them. And then uh, as, as far as moving forward, um, what you, off the field, I guess when you guys get back in the, in the clubhouse, what do you tell you guys then, away from everybody like me? I mean, really, I mean, the season is, it was a fantastic season. We're ex extremely proud of these young men. Uh, this doesn't define the whole season. It's just uh, the hardest thing right now because it's the most painful because uh, none of us expected it in. I mean, nobody did. I mean, you don't think, oh, well, this is it. I mean, we expected to play for state championship and we're not. And so um, just proud of them. Uh, this is going to hurt, but it, it's going to pass. We're going to look back and be proud of each other. And then finally, Coach, uh, moving forward, where's where's the program go from here now? Well, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's headed obviously in the right direction. We just keep trying to build, keep trying to put the pieces in the, uh, the right place. And uh, obviously we're going to try and go a little further next year. I mean, we're just going to try and get better each time we get, get an opportunity. One, two, three, Raiders! Despite seeing their season come to an end, the Raiders fought hard down the stretch, something head coach Brian Till relayed to his players in a heartfelt speech after the final whistle. Richmond tallied 296 yards of total offense with quarterback Caleb Hood going 13 for 24 through the air with 121 yards. Hood was also the team's leading rusher as he scrambled for 87 yards on 19 attempts and scoring his lone touchdown of the night with his legs. Although Richmond's state championship run fell short in 2018, several Raiders are expected to be named to the All-SAC team. RO Sports will publish the full team, including a full feature on Richmond's selections when it's announced following the state playoffs. You can, of course, find that on richmondobserver.com. Richmond Community College and Fidelity Bank are teaming up to bring a new concert series to Cole Auditorium. College President Dr. Dale McKinnis announced the three concert classic rock and country series at a press conference Monday. The new series starts February 23rd with country singer Craig Morgan, followed by Hotel California, an Eagles tribute band on March 5th, and North Carolina native and American Idol winner Scott McCreary on March 29th. McKinnis said classic rock and country fans from the college gave suggestions as to who would be a good draw. Ticket prices vary based on seating and season tickets are available. For more information, call 910-410-1691 or visit richmondcc.edu backslash rock and country. Despite the rain, folks were still in good spirits as they enjoyed the Saturday's Christmas on the square under the shelter of an umbrella or the corner of a building, that is, until around 12.30 p.m. when it became more than a drizzle, sending most home. There were around 90 vendors scheduled to attend, although some decided not to come due to the threat of rain. Local vendors included PDBs and storyteller J.A. Bolton and various food booths were set up filling the air with the aroma of turkey legs, sausage dogs, and collard sandwiches. There were also free vision screenings provided by the Rockingham Lions Club and an exhibition of local photographers at Arts Richmond. Although the entertainment was supposed to last all afternoon, it was cut short as well as the rain became heavier. 
The race for the 9th Congressional District apparently isn't quite over. Despite Democrat Dan McCready's concession to Republican Mark Harris, the North Carolina State Board of Elections has failed to certify the contest for the second time this week due to, quote, claims of numerous irregularities and concerted fraudulent activities related to absentee mail ballots in Bladen County, the Charlotte Observer reports. Instead, the board has called for a hearing to discuss the issue by December 21st, according to the Observer. Bladen was only one of two counties in the district that voted overwhelmingly for Harris. The other was Union County. The district also includes Richmond, Anson, Scotland, Robeson, and parts of Mecklenburg and Cumberland counties. The first denial was last Tuesday, and the second was Friday afternoon following a closed session, according to The Observer. Harris released a statement Friday afternoon castigating the state board for refusing to provide details of the investigation to the public. Current records show Harris has 905 more votes than McCready. The 116th Congress is scheduled to open session at noon on January 3, 2019, and The Observer reports Harris has already attended orientation for new members. All right, when we return, I'll be bringing you your Live at 5 weather report from the new studios coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. Hayden Construction has two new homes under construction at two distinct locations, 125 Crystal Court in Carolina Hills and on Robertdale School Road. Both feature incredible floor plans and distinct features inside and out. Hayden Construction, quality, value, and beauty. Call Jamie Smart at 910-331-5811 or Nicole Hayden at 910-995-0717 today to schedule an appointment. Exit Realty, making dreams a reality. Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is all about rustic home decor and gifts. You will always find a variety of unique antiques, vintage, and new items in our shop. Come and see our selection of housewarming, new baby, and wedding gifts. For the man in your life, we have many collectibles, boker knives, and leather. And ladies love the jewelry, purses, candles, hats, and t-shirts. We also offer a 30-day layaway program. Come and experience shopping at Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts. At Kyocera, we see your company differently. We see your documents, how they're accessed, what it takes to keep them secure, and how well your workflow is flowing. Kyocera helps your entire document infrastructure run more efficiently, securely, and cost-effectively. And what we see is an opportunity to integrate all of it. Today's Live at 5 weather report is brought to you by Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts. And we are in a new studio in downtown Rockingham, but the weather is much the same. I know over the weekend it was rainy and yet pretty warm, especially for the end of November slash beginning of December. Uh, moving forward, the temperatures are going to start going back down. So with that being said, let's take a look at the map behind me. Down in Lumberton, a high of 55 for tomorrow, a low of 40. Up in Fayetteville, high of 53, low of 39. Much the same in Rayford, a high of 54, low of 39. And then just above my shoulder in Southern Pines for tomorrow, high of 53, low of 38. Right here in Richmond County in the northern end in Ellerby, expect a high of 53, low of 38 for tomorrow. Right here in Rockingham, 54 for the high, 39 for the low, and then across the PD River, same temperatures for tomorrow in Wadesboro. If you're heading down to Laurenburg, 55 will be the high for tomorrow with a low of 40, and then down in Bennettsville, 54 for a high, once again, a low of 40. So let's take a look at the five-day weather forecast. As I just mentioned, the temperatures are going to start dropping, especially at night. We've got some really chilly nights coming up, but as far as during the day for Tuesday, 0% chance of rain should be a beautiful day with a high of 54, low of 39. On Wednesday, another beautiful day with 0% precipitation then, high of 47, low of 27. So as I mentioned, the temperature's starting to drop, especially Wednesday night. Make sure you've got your coat if you're heading out. 
On Thursday, a high of 47, low of 32, but during the day should be another beautiful one. But again, keep in mind, as we get into nighttime and the sun goes down, it is going to get into freezing temperatures. As we get into the weekend on Friday, another gorgeous day, partly cloudy throughout the day, high of 54, low of 35. Uh, but then as we get into the middle of next weekend on Saturday, a 50% chance of rain expected that day, high of 42, low of 31. So temperatures are bouncing up and down. We're going to see some freezing temperatures at night, but for the next four days, it should be beautiful. And that's going to do it for your Live at 5 weather report. And when we return, we've got your RO Sports update. It's coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at the Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. At Richmond Community College, we can prepare you for a high-skill, high-paying career in a variety of fields. From business to education, engineering, utilities, healthcare, criminal justice, information technology, and human services. At Richmond Community College, we can save you thousands of dollars on tuition through our university transfer programs that provide a seamless transition to universities and colleges throughout North Carolina. At Richmond Community College, we are always developing new courses and programs in response to the communities we serve. We offer day, evening, and online courses, and you can now complete five curriculum programs entirely online. At Richmond Community College, we believe in helping you prepare for a better life. Richmond Community College, local college, big impact. The Sand Hills Bowling Center was the scene for the second SAC Bowling Meet of the Year as both the Richmond Raider and Lady Raider teams were in action. Coached by first-year head coach Ralph Butler, Richmond battled Jack Britt and Lumberton High Schools in the lane, but both teams ultimately came up short to the Buccaneers and Pirates. Last season, Jack Britt and Lumberton were the top two programs in the conference standings. Against the Lady Buccaneers, the Lady Raiders fell by just 14 total pins, as the Raiders weren't far behind, losing by 16 total pins. Lumberton proved to be a much tougher opponent, with the Lady Raiders losing by 94 pins, and the Raiders falling behind by 294 total pins. With the two losses to Jack Britt and Lumberton, both Richmond teams slipped to fifth place in the SAC standings. The Richmond bowling teams will look to bounce back this Thursday, December 6th, in Fayetteville, the Raiders and Lady Raiders will bowl against Pinecrest and 71st High School starting at 4 p.m. The Raider wrestling team hosted its second tournament of the young season Saturday inside Raider Gymnasium, and it was a handful of junior varsity wrestlers who helped Richmond on the mat. Competing in Raider Rumble 2, head coach Earl Nicholson's team finished 3-2 on the day, its second straight meet with a winning record. Three meets into the 2018-2019 season, Richmond now has an 8-6 overall record, and finished tied with Douglas Bird High School on Saturday for third place. Visiting Holly Springs High School won the tournament with a record of 4-1, while fellow SAC opponent 71st High School took second place. Richmond will begin SAC conference matches on Wednesday, December 5th at Scotland High School. The Raiders will face Hope County and Pinecrest High Schools. Richmond will begin SAC conference matches on Wednesday, December 5th at Scotland High School. The Raiders will face Hope County and Pinecrest High Schools. And that's going to do it for another edition of Live at 5. Be sure to download the RO app for your mobile device. And for all the latest news in Richmond County, visit richmondobserver.com. Be sure to tune in to Good Morning Sandhills every morning from 6.30 to 8.30 a.m. And catch the RO Sports Show each Thursday at 5.30 p.m. For the Live at 5 crew, I'm Matt Harrelson. Good night, Richmond County.